President Biden before the American people, before Congress tonight. A joint session, shaking Vice President Kamala Harris's hand there. Of course, just before that, shaking the hand of Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who he joked at the beginning, President Biden said, I don't want to ruin your reputation, but I look forward to working with you. Both the President and Speaker McCarthy, as we mentioned, have signaled uh, respect for one another as they face this looming uh, debt ceiling battle in Congress. That was part of this speech, and we'll get to that in a moment. But as we watch the President uh, prepare to leave the room, the shaking of the hands, the greeting members of Congress that we always expect after the State of the Union, uh, Mary Bruce, there, there were some interesting moments. We'll go through them all here, moments of bipartisan support, but also some uncomfortable moments uh, of, of some heckling there in the crowd. We saw Speaker McCarthy have to play the role of trying to quiet the chamber. But overall, as far as the president's concern, his performance tonight, what did you see in someone you cover every day? I see the president speak almost every day. We have not seen this Joe Biden in a while. Um, he, he brought it. He was energetic. He was in command. He was comfortable. For large sections of this speech, this was very relaxed. And look, he certainly is uh, sort of in his comfort zone on the Hill. But he, for naysayers who, who think that he isn't up for the job or isn't ready for another four years, should he make that decision, I think he, he showed them that he is up to the task. Uh, he was jovial, joking around. He poked Republicans. But in a really, you know, sort of soft way at times. He certainly showed he is quick on his feet when he really turned the tables on the debate about Social Security and Medicare. I know we will, we will get to that. But over and over again, it all underscored that this was a speech for the American people. This was not a speech about Washington. He was vintage Biden, joking around, quoting his dad, going back to that refrain constantly of trying to reach out to the American people, blue collar workers, arguing that he is doing the job that they hired him to do and that, you know, if he wanted to, trying to certainly seemed like a dress rehearsal for another run. We heard over and over again inside that chamber, Mary, tonight, finish the job. We knew that that would be uh, how he would frame this case he was making to the American people and to both uh, parties in that chamber. Rachel Scott is in the chamber tonight. and. Rachel, your observations in that room. Well, I can tell you right now, as Democrats are waiting to shake the president's hand, we are seeing Republicans quickly head for the exits. Uh, tense moments in the chamber tonight when the president insisted that Republicans wanted to cut Medicare and Social Security. Republicans wasted no time jumping to their feet. Several shouted no. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene got up. She was among several Republicans who shouted liar. And then the, pro the president using it as an opportunity to put Republicans on the record. I can tell you that the full chamber, Democrats and Republicans, alike stood up when the president said that cuts to Medicare and Social Security should be off the table. And that is something that Speaker McCarthy has gone on the record about. He has insisted that those cuts indeed should be off the table. But there was other criticism uh, from Republicans tonight of the president. When the president brought up China, we heard another Republican shout, China spied on us. When the president brought up fentanyl deaths, we had another Repu Republican shout, it's your fault. Uh, but there were moments of unity tonight in the chamber, David, particularly when the president acknowledged the parents of Tyree Nichols, who was sitting in the first lady's box. We had Democrats and Republicans applaud, give them a standing ovation as he mentioned them by name. And I'm seated very close to where the mother of Tyree Nichols was seated. And as she rose to her feet as the president called for action for some type of police reform. I heard her mouth the words, please, please, uh, urging Congress to get something done. But in a sign of the challenges ahead, Republicans remained seated during during those calls and they also remain seated when the president made that blanket call for more Democrats and Republicans to reach across the aisle and work together David remarkable observation stay with us here uh, Rachel as we continue to cover this the president uh, making his way uh, through the room uh, working uh, through his foreign policy uh, establishment the, the the chair of the Joint Chiefs just over his, uh, his shoulder there but Lindsay we heard Rachel bring up the family of Tyree Nichols that was a very moving moment you heard uh, you could hear a pin drop basically inside that chamber. The president said public safety depends on public trust. And mm -hmm. we noticed uh, that not in the speech was something he, he appeared to ad lib there, saying just as every officer who pins on the badge deserves to come home at night, uh, so do children. 
You know, I'll leave it up to the pundits and historians as far as how he did tonight, but I think the one place that he nailed it as it pertains to that particular discussion is the empathy. You know, at one point he was talking about, I know how it feels when he was talking about struggling economically, but then he started talking about the talk, the conversation that to all too often black parents have to have uh, with their, their children. And he talked about how he never had to have the talk with his kids. And he said, but just imagine. And you can imagine that uh, Rovon Wells, the, the mother of Tyree, she only wants to hear two words. That's police reform. You know, he kept talking about the refrain, as you just said, let's finish the job. That's a job that he said would have been passed in uh, May of 2021. And so here we are almost two years later, and the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act still has stalled. And, and apparently uh, those conversations are going to pick back up. Um, but that as we just heard from Rachel Scott, we saw her imploring uh, the Republicans who were down on the floor standing and applauding, applauding to do something. To do something and walking that fine line of acknowledging the job facing law enforcement across this country uh, that good cops essentially yes. don't like bad cops too and saying we need to get them the training they need. But again, powerful, as you point out, do something. We saw her from the chamber up above, uh, the mother of Tyree Nichols looking down at Congress saying, you can't let another one of these incidents go by without doing something. And apparently Tim Scott and Cory Booker said that on the heels of the death of Tyree Nichols, uh, that they have renewed talks. Uh, this is something that she said that, that her son uh, came here as on assignment from God and that she was hoping that something beautiful uh, would come out of his death. And, and this is that one something that she's hoping for. Yeah, said her son is a beautiful soul and something good will come from this. Uh, we will watch. She's watching and the nation's now watching after that moment. We are watching the president uh, greet retired justices from the Supreme Court a moment ago. Uh, that was something uh, new that we haven't seen in, in recent times, uh, John Carl. And uh, you heard Rachel Scott talk about that moment uh, on the floor. It was one of many. Uh, Speaker uh, McCarthy tested, if you will, about how well he could keep sort of a fractured Republican Party in the House. Uh, you know, sort of uh, their behavior was on full display tonight. We, and we saw some uncomfortable moments uh, when it came to fentanyl, uh, a couple of other moments as well. Uh, you, you heard Marjorie Taylor Greene yell, uh, liar, when it came to Medicare and Social Security. But then this was a very interesting scene we watched unfold. Uh, you know, fascinating because McCarthy earlier today publicly told his members, we have a code of ethics in the House, we have a way to behave, made it clear, respect for the president. He didn't want to see that display. And that display, you saw Marjorie Taylor Greene at times, and it wasn't just her. It was a pretty large group of Republicans acting, heckling the president of the United States during a State of the Union, not what McCarthy wanted to see. And from Biden himself, we've seen a hard-edged Biden at times talking about MAGA Republicans and dangerous extremists. That language was gone from this speech. He did poke the Republicans. He made some... You know, some, I mean, the stuff he said about Social Security was over the top. There, there, there's nobody seriously talking about sunsetting Social Security in the Republican Party. But he did it with a smile. It was a jovial Joe, Joe Biden, and he provoked that behavior uh, from the Republicans, clearly making Kevin McCarthy uncomfortable. We do know that entitlements have been part of the discussion long term, yeah. though, about yeah. where uh, the country can potentially save money. Democrats say that's a, a non-starter. I, I do want to bring and so in... so is McCarthy. I mean, McCarthy said, look, no cuts to Social Security or Medicare, and so is McConnell. But to go from booze to the entire chamber standing, John, amazing, you'll acknowledge, an right? moment, Democrats yes. and Republicans, <laughs> he said, apparently, we all agree on this then. Yeah. Uh, and, and moments later, they were all uh, on their feet saying, we will not touch Social Security uh, and Medicare. That will be a moment, I think, that we go yes. back to uh, perhaps in the future along uh, the road with this debate. I want to bring in uh, Donna Brazil and Chris Christie. They always grade the performance of uh, the president after a State of the Union, regardless of which administration. Donna Brazil, to you first, and on that moment where he got Democrats and Republicans to pledge uh, that they wouldn't touch Social Security and Medicare. What do you make of that? I thought it was a master class, a master class in politics, but m more importantly, a master class in how you can get your opponents to stand up and agree with you right there in real time. Uh, but look, I thought Joe Biden was incredible tonight, not only in what he said, but how he said it and the tone that he used. He was really talking to those so-called invisible Americans, Americans who want to be seen and heard. So tonight they heard, I think a president says, I'm bringing gas prices down, I'm bringing down the price of eggs, but we got to finish the job. So he had a plea at the, at the end, but I thought overall, I give him high marks.
And Donna, you know a lot of people throughout this country are, are questioning at home whether or not uh, President Biden is going to run for a second term. It is part of the conversation uh, in this country. Given what you saw tonight, uh, the energy that he brought to this address, what do you make of the potential that he will declare that he's going to run for a second term? Well, as you well know, the next presidential election is more than 637 days away. So we have a little bit of time. But I do believe that President Biden will seek re-election. He has a great record. He knows that there's more to do. But tonight he showed us the receipts. So I hope that we'll hear from him later this year on his plans for the future. But as one Democrat, and only one, there are millions of others. I think he, he deserve another run for it. Donna Brazil, as always, we appreciate it. Chris Christie former governor of New Jersey, ABC News analyst. Chris, what did you make of what you heard tonight? Well, uh, two observations from me, David. The first is that um, any uh, allusion any longer to Joe Biden being a moderate is now over. Um, if you listen to this laundry list of giveaways that he uh, announced throughout this address tonight, it, you know he's telling the American public, basically, turn over most of your money to us we know how to spend it better than you do. Um, and so, and I'm gonna give you this and give you that and give you that. Let me tell everybody out there, nobody gives anybody anything. It's gotta be paid for, either by increasing deficits, higher taxes, or both. And I was struck by what all the things he wants to give away to people, um, to promise them. Let me tell you, that's definitely a politician running for reelection. And secondly, I thought there was a moment of incredible hypocrisy when the president talked about pounded on the pharmaceutical industry. It's pounded and pounded on the pharmaceutical industry. And then immediately after that, talked about how we survived the COVID pandemic because of the innovation that brought us vaccines. Well, where the heck does he think that innovation came from? It came from billions of dollars in private investment made by the Pfizer Corporation in the development of that technology over the course of decades that was being able to be brought to bear to be able to slow down the death rate, the death toll, and the hospitalization toll that was going on in this country because of the COVID-19 virus. Yet, he wants to take that money away from them to pay for you know his laundry list of giveaways in social programs and he wants to criticize the pharmaceutical industry which are the people not the government those industries develop the technology to be able to cure COVID-19 I thought that was a breathtaking moment of hypocrisy um, and and one that I think will be discussed a lot in the in the days and weeks going forward Governor Christie though you think it's very clear he's running again from what you saw tonight oh there's no doubt about it look any politician who's giving away everything, he was essentially emptying his pockets, my pockets, and your pockets, David, to give away everything he possibly could to the people who he's going to be hoping will vote for him in, uh, in less than two years. That's a guy who is running for re-election. Uh, there's no question in my mind about it. Uh, he wants to stay for another four years beyond the four he's been given. And he is already setting the tone. This was the warm-up for the announcement that he's running for re-election. Perhaps that's the one point I can get you and Donna to agree on. See, I work for consensus here, <laughs> at least on, on one point. Chris and Donna, we thank you as always as President Biden continues uh, to work the room inside this chamber. I want to go back to Rachel Scott tonight because uh, Mary uh, was talking earlier about the level of energy President Biden brought uh, to this speech here in the chamber. Uh, there were bipartisan moments. We're looking right now at Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, uh, second gentleman Doug Emhoff there, uh, also with Speaker McCormick. McCarthy. Speaker McCarthy, Rachel at times, uh, tested himself up there in this new role, uh, given the fact that he wanted a unified Republican Party in that chamber. Exactly, David. And this is just the reality that Speaker Kevin McCarthy is faced with. He is not only faced with a very thin, a very narrow Republican majority in the House, he's also faced with different factions of the Republican Party. And he wanted tonight to remain civil. He wanted members of his conference to remain respectful to the President of the United States. I was told 
told by sources in a closed door meeting earlier. He urged his party to continue to remain cordial as the president gave this address tonight. But as we saw this play out here in the chamber, there were certain moments where things did take a turn, where you had Republicans uh, calling the president of the United States a liar on certain issues, where they got up and pointed fingers uh, at the president before then sitting down. And, and this just underscores the immense amount of uh, challenges ahead for Speaker McCarthy uh, when it comes to unifying his own party, David. I want to bring in Terry Moran, who's watching along with us here. You, you heard the president tonight uh, talk about unemployment, obviously that 3.4 percent unemployment rate in the last couple of days that came out. That's the lowest in 69, 800,000 manufacturing jobs, uh, more than 10 million jobs in, since uh, he began uh, his term. Uh, but Terry, there was an acknowledgment of the people that he called uh, invisible. That's a word we've heard from previous administrations, but it was an acknowledgement that there are many Americans who simply don't feel uh, these numbers, the, 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 these apparent positive numbers. We know we're still dealing with inflation. It's eased somewhat, but the, the numbers that President Biden pointing to tonight, uh, there did seem to be acknowledgement on his part that not everyone is enjoying these numbers. Absolutely, and our ABC News Washington Post poll that found that 41%, four out of every 10 Americans, told us that they are more, they are worse off financially uh, than they were when Joe Biden became president. That's a tough number for any president. And so, you know, what, what Chris Christie calls a, a laundry list in, in some ways is old-fashioned, tub-thumping, democratic, populist politics. Uh, that is a list of things that people want, help with child care, help with pre prescription drugs, even the junk fees uh, that, that you're charged when you change cable companies or when you go to a hotel. You know, he goes after that, too. That's the, that was definitely, it seemed to me, uh, aimed at a re-election, making people happy. But in general, I think this speech was aimed at, at the, the America that wasn't just forgotten during this pandemic or recession, but that's been forgotten on 40 years of economic policy in the United States. He said for decades the middle class uh, has been forgotten, and he wants to re return jobs to that group of Americans. He said several times, as he has across the country, that he wants jobs that don't require a college degree. It's an old-fashioned sense uh, of what the American dream is. You can be a middle-class person, you can get a good job, pay the mortgage, put food on the table, maybe get a cabin up north or something, have a decent life uh, without depending, with, and in your hometown, without having to move, uh, without having to depend on the forces of globalization, that America will take care of its own. It was a national industrial policy that he outlined tonight. Very ambitious, and it's no question it's what he would run on should he choose. Mary Bruce, you cover this administration day in and day out. This looks like a president who's enjoying himself here tonight. <laughs> he, he talked about the bipartisan infrastructure, as Terry alluded uh, to there. He said that many Republicans supported it, and even the ones who didn't, who are now asking me for money in their districts, <laughs> I will show up, I will be there for the groundbreaking. Yeah, uh, not so subtle dig there at the Republicans who didn't support the bill. Um, yeah, first of all, this is Joe Biden enjoying himself. This may be the part that he likes the most about a State of the Union, is just working the room right here. Um, but he was making a sales pitch throughout this entire speech, right, trying to convince the American people that his policies are working and that if they just stick with him, they will start to feel the impact, that those poll numbers will change, those four in ten Americans who feel that they are worse off now than when he started. He's asking them to trust him and say, stick with me and you will feel a positive impact of that. That's a tall order in a speech to convince people. It's a huge audience, possibly his biggest of the year, but that's the goal here. Uh, and he can try and sell it, but will it resonate finally? That's the big question. And Martha Reddits, that's the challenge. You've traveled this country. It's whether or not he could be optimistic, but also at the same time connect with Americans who say, we're waiting here, Mr. President. And, and you've talked to a lot of people across the country. I certainly have, and, and I'll go back to the midterms. All they talked about was the economy and how that would affect them and those gas prices. And indeed, Joe Biden is trying to appeal to all of them. Just wait and see. We'll get through this. We'll get through this. Or if you listen to Chris Christie, he was giving them everything they want. But that does resonate. That is what they want to hear. They do want to hear that things will get better. And if there's one area where he might get the majority of Americans, it, it might be taking on the pharmaceutical companies. So that might have been one safe point. <laughs> I, I mean, look, you might, uh, Governor Christie may be right about the hypocrisy of those two points, but I mean, it's not unpopular to go against pharmaceutical companies for high-priced prescription drugs. By the way, this is the this is different than the last two State of the Unions because we're not got a packed chamber. I nope. mean, this is 
This is not a COVID reduced audience state of the union, and he is loving that. Not only that, everyone is here, but they were allowed to bring guests for the first time yeah. in several years. This is a, a different moment this America is, is witnessing and tonight. And he's first as president to see this. Um, but I got to say, David, the, the shouting and the liar and the pointing, it just tells you how far we have come. You remember in 2009 when Joe Wilson, a congressman from South Carolina, stood up at a joint session, Barack Obama speech, and said, you're a liar. And it, he, got, he got censured. Uh, there was a widespread outcry. And here you had how many members of Congress yeah. doing much more than that? Well, it was a startling moment back then, and, and you'd have to... And it was a single person saying one line. And you'd have to be concerned if it's considered the norm now. Yeah. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.